the first row, you'll have the 0-4 of Dan Apperson and the number A66 of Ken Carpenter. Back to the second row, we see Jerry Witten in the black, numbers two, and in the second row on the outside, Scott Farr, number 63. Jack Dandy in 4J and Joe Biondolillo in 66 in the third row. Dennis Whitman in 1X and Craig Pace in number 45 in the fourth row. The fifth row, Jerry Brown in the 44 and Dave Bazzi in A5. The fifth row, Dave Lambert in 08 and the number 69 of Ken Algren. Then Tom Wagner in 57, Buddy Vertries in 41, Leonard Basham in 9, Bob Mullins in 7X and Lee Padgett in 5B as we start this one. Two and three abreast, taking him to the wall and taking the lead as the number A66 of Ken Popper, but he loses the lead. In turn to Scott Farr, the number 63 and beyond the little challenges gets hit and spun out by Carpenter turn number three and an unforced spin by far as we see the number 41 of Buddy Bertries catches the concrete going into the third turn of the first lap of the race stacking up behind him the 08 of Lambert and the number nine car of Basham and now everybody else keeps going but it looks as if Padgett's number five has stalled Padgett, the only driver not able to get away on that first turn incident. The lead goes to the number two car of Jerry Witten in second place. By my reckoning, you've got the number 57 car of Walker. Now challenging in third place, you've got the number four of Dandy. Fourth place is the number 45 car of Craig Pace. Now we've got that battle that's developing for position number two as we go to red. We go to red for that first lap incident that saw the number 41 of Buddy Virtue stuffed into the third turn wall. Everybody managed to get going and did not lose a lap with the sole exception of the number 5B of Lee Padgett, the last starter of this contest. It was an all-out battle, an all-out total war for the lead positions in that race as we saw the start of that but the real battle was in the back of the pack as we saw everybody charging up through on the first attempt to start that race we saw the number a66 of ken carpenter take dan apperson high into the first turn and take the lead but then he was passed in turn by scott farr the number 63 then far in an unforced error spun in turn number three and that gave the lead to the number two of Jerry Witten as we come down to red. We will now put together a restart lineup and stage everybody for the second beginning of this race. Officially, we completed two of the 50 laps of this preliminary race before we went to red. The number five on the racetrack, the black number five that scored as the A5 of Dave Bazzi, will be restarting this race in position number 11. As the field comes down toward the infield, we'll start to stage them into the staging lanes. On the restart, you'll have in the lead the black number two of Jerry Witten. In second place will be the white number four of Jack Dandy. Third place will be the number 45 of Craig Pace. Your fourth position will be Ken Algren in number 69. Fifth place will be the number 63 of Scott Farr. Sixth position will go to the number one X of Dennis Whitman. In seventh place, you'll have the number 66 car of Joe Biondolillo. In seventh place, you'll have the number 44 of Jerry. In eighth place, you'll have the number 44 of Jerry Brown. Ninth place will be the number A66 of Ken Carpenter. Tenth place will be the 04 of Dan Apperson, the pole sitter. Eleventh place will be the number A5 of Dave Bazzi. Twelfth place will be the number nine of Leonard Basham recovering from the spin and stall. In thirteenth place, you'll have the 08 of Dave Lambert. Fourteenth place will be the number 41 of Buddy Vertries. And in fifteenth place, you'll have the number 7X car of Bob Mullins, Jr., Three laps down because of the stall that caused the red flag. You've got the number 5B of Lee Padgett, who has now left the racetrack. And already one lap down after being lapped, even in that quick sequence of racing, the number 57 of Tom Wagner showed us one lap down. 
So again, let's review the way in which they will restart this race at the Indianapolis Speedrome with the number two of Jerry Witten holding on to the lead. Second place, the 4J of Jack Dandy. In third place, the number 45 of Craig Pace. And fourth place, the number 69 of Ten Ken Algren. In fifth place, the number 63 of Scott Farr. Sixth place, the number one X of Dennis Whitman. Last qualifying spot at this juncture belongs to the number 66. That's the black number 66 of Joe Biondolillo. In eighth place, Jerry Brown of the number 44. Ninth place belongs to the number A66, the red car of Ken Carpenter. Tenth place, the 04, the yellow and red 04 of Dan Apperson. Twelfth place goes to the number, excuse me, eleventh place goes to the number A5 of Dave Bazzi, and 12th place to the number 9 of Leonard Basham, 13th place to the number 08 of Dave Lambert, 14th place to Buddy Vertries in number 41, and the last driver shown on the lead lap of the number 7X is Bob Mullins Jr. All of these drivers now move on to the racetrack for the second start of this race. Expect a very quick start to this race. As the field comes out of the fourth turn, we turn them loose for the second beginning of this contest as we come to the green flag. Dandy in the 4J takes the inside position and for the moment will lead away for the number two of Whitten. Whitten does not give up easily though. And now there's the number 69 car of Ken Aldrin trying to come into second place and makes the pass on Whitten. And Whitten now falls back to fourth place behind the number 45 of Craig Pace as we finish lap number three. Whitten drops further back, passed by the number one X of Wisman. Whitman's back to fifth place, already up to the last qualifying spot and on the charge. Oh, watch out! The number nine car of Basham in a collision with Beyond the Lolo's number 66 spins through the infield, gets restarted, but again he has fallen to the tail end of the lead lap and must move above the marker tire as everybody else finishes lap number four. By my reckoning, your new driver at the tail end of the lead lap and last qualifying spot. That's a battle between the number 44 car of Jerry Brown and Buddy Vertries in the number 41 as we see the number 57 car of Wagner get back onto the racetrack, but he's lost many laps. But still, with a 50-lap race to be run, he could get back up to the front of the field. The battle continues for the lead. With the number 69 of Aldrin leading the number 45 of Pace. Third place, the Dandy in number four. The fourth position belonging to the number 66 of Beyond the Lolo. Then the number one X of Wisman. Watch out of the crossovers, the number 08. Of Lambert tries to come through. And we watch on the charge, the number nine of Leonard Basham, who now is nearly one lap down and tries to move up. Scott Farr is in trouble with the number 63. That machine is slowing down and he is dropping out of the race. Lead still belongs to the number 69 of Algren as we come down to finish lap number eight of 50. Second position, number 45 of Pace. Watch out of the crossover, the number 57 car of Wagner almost crashed into the number 866 of Carpenter, and Carpenter has stalled his car, gets restarted very slowly, but has fallen one lap down. And now the number 45 machine, who is running in second, the 45 of Craig Pace drops out as well. At the crossover, almost a crash between the 41 of Vertries, the number one of Wisman, and the number 44 of Jerry Brown. Lead by my reckoning still belongs to the number 69 of Ken Algren, who's trying to put Brown to the number 44 lap down. I'll give second place now to the number four of Dandy. Third place to Beyond Delillo in the black number 66. Up to fourth place, you've got the number 41 of Vertree. I'll give first, fifth place the number one of Wisman. Sixth place, the number two of Witten. And I'll give unofficially the last qualifying spot to the 08 car of Lambert. Lambert's almost a lap down, remember. And Lambert is facing a challenge to the eighth place, number nine. And now there's the number five car of Bazzi and the number 69 of Aldrin, the leader of this race, has now put Brown's number 44 lap down. Now we notice that Bash of the number nine has gotten that seventh position as Carpenter's car goes up and smokes steam from that number 66 car on the west side of the racetrack. Algren in number 69, looks for the crossover, now puts the number eight car of Lambert, the 08 one lap down. 
the number nine machine of Basham, who has spun twice in this race, now finds himself at the tail end of the lead lap and the last driver with a qualifying spot to the main event. But Basham has recovered from both of those spins to run in the seventh spot. Now in second place, by my reckoning, is the number 41 of Buddy Vertries. We've got ourselves a three-car battle for third place between Dandy and the 4J, the fourth place beyond the Lolo and the number 66, and in fifth place, the number one car of Wisman. In sixth place, I'll give the number two of Witten, and seventh place, last drive, watch out, Vertries, the number 41, got into a confrontation with somebody, Vertries breaks the left front suspension on that car, and is now dropping out of the race. Vertries goes one lap to the number 69 of Algren, and Vertries with a lot of smoke on that car, who got involved with the confrontation with another car on the racetrack. Vertries, bad luck continues, and he will drop out of the race. That means your last qualifying spot to the main event is one lap down to the leader, and by my reckoning, that last qualifying spot goes to the number 44 of Jerry Brown. That's our unofficial reckoning as the field moves through its 18th lap for the leader. Ken Algren, the Michigan driver, the number 69. We noticed that Bazzi in the number five has stalled his machine at the north end of the racetrack, but he's far enough out of the way that we'll continue to race under green. your three-car battle for what is now third, now second place once again. The second position belongs to the number 66 of Beyond the Lillo. In third place, you have the number one of Wisman. Fourth place is the four of Jandy. Dandy in fifth place is the number nine of Basham. Those drivers all battling for position number two as they come down and finish their 19th lap of 25. And running with some smoke but still running in the lead is the number 66 of Ken Algren. That battle for second that we've been describing is now split into a couple of races for positions. In second place, you've got the number 66 of Beyond Delillo, who's struggling to stay ahead of Wisman in the number one. And closing up is the number nine. We're going to red. We're going to red now. We're going to red. Waiting for the officials to give us the reason for that red flag, we anticipate it will be for Bazzi's number five, although our indication, we had no previous indication that Bazzi's car was considered to be a problem by the officials. Again, all of this happens with 20 laps of 50 completed. Several cars will make stops during this red flag period, among them the number 45 of Pace. There's Vertries going off the track of the number 41, and the number 66 of Carpenter pushed into the infield and into the pit area. Bazzi, the number five, the driver that brought out the red flag, we believe. Getting set for the restart. The field is being turned loose to run this race again. And we watch Leonard Basham making a big move in this three-car battle, four-car battle for second place. But Basham comes up at the short end of the stick as everybody else keeps on charging. Aldrin leads to the number 69. Beyond the Lolo runs in the second place the number 66. Now challenged by the number nine of Leonard Basham, who's in third place. Now you've got yourself a battle for fourth place between the number one of Wisman and the number four J of Jack Dandy. There's Basham in the number nine coming to the inside of Beyond the Lolo and making the pass. Basham comes from last place twice to run in second and finds himself a quarter lap behind the leading Aldrin and number 66 as we get toward the halfway mark of this race. Now Basham is trying to chase down Aldrin. 
Diabolola runs by himself in position number three. Then you've got the number four, Jay of Dandy. Wisman in the number one. And then that makes up most of your drivers on the lead lap. As you see, Wisman has now fallen behind. Last driver on the lead lap now by my reckoning is the number one X of Dennis Wisman, who works through turns number three and four. Now we're getting to the halfway mark of this race, and it's time to go to the stopwatch to find out what sort of advantage the number 69 has as we go through turns number three and four. The gap between the number 69, the leader, Algren, is really shrinking between first and second place. It's down to one second as we work through turn number two of lap number 26. The gap is seven-tenths of one second. The number nine of Leonard Basham, after two confrontations, chasing down Ken Algren and challenging for the lead, looks to the inside of Algren through turns number one and two of lap number 27. Still all at the crossover, almost a crash between the 5B pageant and the number 44 Brown. We're working the 27th lap of the race. Algren still has the lead by two lengths. The number nine comes down to the inside. That'll be an outside move in three and four. Can he hold it? The number nine of Basham tries the high side move around the number 69 of Algren. They'll storm to the line as two cars collide out of number four, the number 08 car of Lambert and the number 45 of Pace collide. Pace stays silent as the number nine of Basham completes the pass and comes to the lead. Basham takes the lead on lap number 29 as the number 45 of Pace gets restarted. Almost pulls in front of a couple of cars and we're back to full green flag racing. But trouble for the number 45 of Pace. He has a flat tire on the right rear and that'll drop him out. The lead belongs to the number nine of Leonard Basham. Algren back to second in the number 69. In third place, I show the number 66 of Biondololo. Beyond the Lolo has destroyed a motor going into turn number three. And the number 66 sits motionless in the middle of turn number one. The rest of the cars pick their way around, but we must go to red with 12 laps left to go in this race. Bitter disappointment for Joe Beyond the Lolo, the 34-year-old auto mechanic out of Mastic, New York a regular racer at the Riverhead Speedway on Long Island who came further than anyone else to race in this three-hour figure-eight endurance race of the Speedrome, was running smoothly and confidently with third place and a sure qualifying spot for the three-hour figure-eight endurance contest, and then saw as he came through the crossover a cloud of smoke that signaled his departure from this race. We now work to clean up the oil that poured from beyond Lolo's car as he came across the line. With any luck, that was no more than just an oil line that broke, and he may be able to get that car fixed and run in the qualifying tomorrow. However, that drastic, a cloud of smoke, that much oil dumped on the racetrack, is a clear sign that there's some serious motor problems. And all beyond Lolo can do is lean back against the car and relax. That drops us down to four drivers on the lead lap as you see the balance of the field taking a bit of a lap on the north portion of the racetrack with nothing better to do. The leader will still be the number nine of Leonard Basham. Ken Algren on the restart will be right behind in second place in the number 69. Then your third place runner at the tail end of the lead lap by my reckoning will be the number one X of Dennis Wisman. Fourth place, one lap down, will be Jack Dandy in the number 4J. By my reckoning, your fifth place driver will be the number two of Jerry Witten. Then you'd have the number 44 of Moore. And those are the drivers who were secure on the lead lap sequence. Seventh place, we'll have to double check with the scores. 
Ladies and gentlemen, he came a long way to race here at the Indianapolis Speed Dome, only to see go up in a cloud of smoke. He deserves your applause. Joe Biondololo, all the way from New York to race here at the Speed Dome. Let's give him a hand and hope he can get that car fixed for tomorrow. When we come to the restart, it could be a dramatic moment because these drivers face a serious challenge on the approach to turn number one. There's a lot of oil that was poured down there as we see our track workers now onto the racetrack trying to pick up that oil using the oil dry and so forth. Getting set for the restart of this contest, as you watch the field now come through the area where we put down all the oil dry, we swept up as much as possible, but there's still going to be a slippery circumstance with the driver's charge into the first turn of the 40th lap of the race. We will have 11 laps left to go when we restart this contest. We need the cars for the Indianapolis Speed Drome qualifying race to the pit gate. Cars for the Indianapolis Speed Drome qualifying race. Cars for the Indianapolis Speed Drome qualifying race to the pit gate. We need the cars for the Indianapolis Speed Drome qualifying race to the pit gate. We will have ourselves a battle for the lead. Whoops. Have ourselves a battle for the lead coming out of turn number four. Basham takes over the lead to the number nine. Trying to outdistance Algren in the number 69 and does so as they head northbound for the 40th time out of 50 laps. Behind them in third place, you've got the number one X car. That's the one X of Dennis Wisman, who by my reckoning is shown as the last driver on the lead lap. And if I run things correctly, we have ourselves drivers that are battling for position number four lap down. That would be the number four of Dandy, the number two of Witten, and the number 44 of Brown. Unofficially, I have those drivers battling for position number four a lap down. Now we have trouble because a marker tire has been dislodged, but again, we will continue to race and finish this contest. The marker tire is running around, but again, it's the spot that you have to pass. That marker tire is now just a used up piece of rubber that's floating down the racetrack. And we see the number nine of Leonard Basham holding on to it, expanding his advantage as it worked down to the 43rd lap of this race. The car of Basham is really putting this field away. We see the second place, number 69 of Algren, running in the runner-up spot. Now Dandy in number four, I, and I show him in fourth place, one lap down. The fifth place, number two of Witten, is actually running ahead of the third place, number one, of Wisman. Again, Wisman, by my reckoning, is on the lead lap. Witten in the number two is a lap down and is actually trying to catch up and almost runs into the number eight car of Lambert, who spins out going into turn number three. Through all of this, Basham holds on to the lead as we'll have five laps to go this next time by. There's Basham with the lead now of about one stretch over the number 69 of Algren. Algren simply is having trouble picking his way through the racetrack, picking through the race traffic. And Leonard Basham now has four laps left to go. Algren still one stretch behind. Third place going to the number one X of Witten. Wisman, rather. Then you've got what I believe is a battle for fifth place, one lap down, between the number two of Whitney and the number 44 of Brown as those drivers battle for position. Leonard Bash with a crossover almost gets caught between the number four of Dandy and the number four, number one X car of Wisman. Almost coming to disaster. Has to watch out of the crossover again. A close encounter with two laps left to go. Basham with this massive advantage now has his only enemy as the crossover. He waits and picks the hole between two groups of two cars each. And Basham coming out of turns number three and four. will see the white flag and one lap left to go. Leonard Basham who found himself almost being lapped from a lap number one confrontation 
spun on the second start of the race to last place, has passed everybody on the racetrack at least once, many of them twice, and comes out of the fourth turn, and the former world champion wins qualifying race number one. In second place, you'll have the number 69 of Ken Algren. In third place, you'll have Dennis Wisman in the number one. Unofficially in fourth place, you'll have Jack Dandy. Unofficially in fifth place, the number 44 of Brown. Unofficially in sixth place, the number two of Whitten. And watch as the smoke pours out of the number 69 of Algren, just barely finishing the race in second spot. Leonard Basham, the man who beat everybody to win the world championship just a few years ago, the winner of this title in 1988, the driver who has run with the best the speed drum has to offer and has put them away, but has also run into the concrete and to the other cars of the crossover more than once, comes home the winner in qualifying race number one. And he'll be down with Al Stilley in just a couple of minutes. Coming onto the racetrack now, the cars for race number two. Vehicle is told to get out of the way, and we get them to this flying start for the three hour qualifying race number two. Watch out into the wall, Country Brown struck by another car. Steve Ryder runs over another machine in the first turn and almost flips the car upside down. And we're going to go to red. It'll be a complete false start as the leader, Charles Graham, gets hit and spun out by the number 70 of Tony Hall. An unbelievable start, which began with the number 83 of Country Brown got into the wall, slowing down several other cars, including the number 28 machine. The 28 being driven by John Elkins, and then the number 64 of Steve Reidner, ran up on top of Elkins' car. We will have a complete restart to this contest. We did not complete a single lap. Those drivers that caused the red flag will receive a one lap penalty for causing the red, as you see Country Brown out of his car examining what looks like a damaged front end. How badly damaged, we can't tell from this angle. John Elkins immediately starts to smoke his cigarette as he gets out of his machine. He lights up on the racetrack. Shades of David Pearson and Dick Trickle. And immediately starts to examine the undercarriage of the 64 of Steve Ryder. He's in a perfect position to do that. Ryder, on the other hand, is moving over to try and supervise the Indy Towing Service crew as they try to get that car out from on top of John Elkins' machine. Joe Simpson of the Indy Towing Service provides the services here for the towing at the Indianapolis Speed Drone. Three tow trucks every night. The way they're going, you wonder if three tow trucks will be enough. The way that they're bashing and banging just on the start of the race. That marked the first attempt to start this Jonathan Bird's Fabulous 50 qualifying race. How many more attempts will there have to be? We stand corrected on the identity of the driver. At first, we thought that was Country Brown's number 83 that got into the concrete. On a second look, we now see that was the number 91 of Mike Blackwell that was involved in the crash. And Country Brown was able to pull away from the wreck scene, but Mike Blackwell is still stuck there. And all three in the towing service wreckers are on hand. And this could be a difficult case. I think they're going to try a very difficult deal here. As you see, Charles Graham got spun out actually after the red flag came out. That's Tony Hull of the number 70 that got into Graham and sent him sideways and then Country Brown was almost hit on by a car that I think was the number 27 of Randy Edwards. 
So here's the circumstances. Steve Reiner's car is in such a precarious position that we're going to need two wreckers to try to get it off. We're literally going to have to pick up Reidner's number 64 from both ends and then lift it off of the Elkins number 28. There goes the number 91 of Mike Blackwell, the first real victim of this race. As you can see, the tie rod's broken. Both front wheels are pointed toward each other. And Mike Blackwell, who is a very nice guy, will have a very long ride back into the pit area. Now the Indy Towing Service guys are doing their job. They have lifted up Reidner's car, and now they have Elkins number 28. They're trying to pull it out of gear and get the number 64 car lifted up just a little further so they can pull Elkins number 28 out from underneath. Elkins back in the car behind the steering wheel working it as they move it out of the way. And now let's take Reidner's number 64 and try to gently and gradually put it back down onto the racetrack. Steve Reiner finally, Steve fi Reiner finally gets back into his race car. If I know Reiner, there's the chance that he will get back into that machine and try to run it again, unless it suffered some suspension damage that we couldn't see. Well, the hook is under, is out of the way. Reiner is poised on the sill of that car, and he gets back behind the wheel. There always is the chance that Reiner could run, but only now we notice that he has a flat tire on the left front, and that means he won't have a chance to run again. And so Steve Reiner, one of the regulars here at the Indianapolis Speedrome, who comes to this track every year with the goal of finishing in the top 20 in pro stock points and fulfilled that goal this year, finishing in 18th, will go off the racetrack the hard way. Through all of this, we were Reiner out of the car, actually glancing at the front end of the machine. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ryder drive that off the track, flat tire at all, change the tire, try to get back into the fight. In the meantime, and our racetrack officials confirmed that speculation that Ryder in the number 64 car will go back into the pit area, change that flat tire, make whatever adjustments are needed to the front end of the car and come back and race again. At least three drivers stand ready to go on the second attempt to start as we bring them through turns number three and four and go to the green flag. And this time, it's Roger Edwards that gets the whole shot in the number 27 as we go to green. But there's Jeff Rich in the number 55. We watch the back of the field as they try to get started. And everybody gets through, we have a clean start. But still, two and three abreast to the back of the pack. There's the number 95 of Bobby Dalton moving on to the racetrack, but he's already lapped down. The 27 of Roger Edwards leads lap number one. Second place, the number 55 of Rich, who tries to make the pass. Here's the pass being made by Rich and bringing with him into second place, the number 34 of Collins, who's bit by Scott Martin in the 76. Doing a lap down, the number 50, 22, and 96, 69 cars. And now the 42 car spins out the earlier leader, Edwards, the number 27. Leader is Rich in 55. Second place is 34, Collins. Third place is 76, Martin. Stuck at the back end of the field and going one lap down is Robbie Fry in the number 12. In fourth place now is the number 66 X of Curtis Murphy as the 21 of Catcher drops out. Fifth place is the number 50 of Ernie Herrera. Sixth place and on the charge is the number 16 of Tracy Fry. And in seventh place, the last qualifier is the number 44 of Gary Bedell. At the crossover, there are cars all over the place. Can they get through? The answer is just barely yes. As we see the number 77 of Dale Canals now go one lap down. Scott Martin snatches the lead. Third leader of this race. Oh, crossover crash between the number 16 of Tracy Fry, who clipped the Ken Lewis number 52, sending that car. And now Scott Martin spears the number 71 of Charles Coles going through the infield, knocking both cars out. And also in trouble, the champion, Dwayne Lee. 
who has trouble going through the intersection. The lead now belongs to the number 34 of Collins. He's fighting for survival out there as everybody else has moved out of the way and now spinning the 27 of Eddie Deal. The lead belongs to number 34 of Collins and second place to the number 55 of Rich. Third place is the number 44 of Gary Battelle. Already up to fourth place is the number five of Ronnie Klotz. Fifth place is the number 66 X of Curtis Murphy. Sixth place is the number 39 of Amos and seventh place is Mike St. John to the number 51. Here come the number 31 of Jack Dossie Jr. and the number 11 of Elza Hoosier racing for position as they charge through three and four. And now the number 77 of Dale Canales is rear-ended hard by the number 76 of Scott Martin. And Elza Hoosier almost crashes head on to the wall here on the east side of the racetrack. Martin survives, watches through the intersection. Ball Mike St. John hits Robert Amos and takes his tie round and forces him into Jack Dossie Jr.'s number 31. And Amos is stalled in the exit of turn number three. Now the number 11 of Oza Hoosier trying to get going again has stalled in turn number one. Through all of this, the lead now goes to the number five of Ronnie Klontz. Klontz leads, and second place goes to the number 34 of Collins, and Collins faces a challenge as he goes to red for the number 51 of Mike St. John. The most recent red flag came when Mike St. John was headed northbound to the number 51, turned sideways of the number 39 of Robert Amos breaking his right front tie rod, and Amos was in turn forced into the number 31 of Jack Dawsey Jr. Two cars credited with bringing out the red flag, the number 11 of Oza Hoosier and the number 39 of Robert Amos. Contenders that are in trouble, the number 71 of Charles Coles who got hit in the intersection by the number 76 of Scott Martin and the number one of Dwayne Lee who stalled that car for a reason that we didn't see over here at the east end of the racetrack. Now Charles Coles may be in good shape along with Dwayne Lee. They were among the top 10 qualifiers when they get their times back as we go to the starting field, they will probably be in good shape. Are there any number of drivers who still are battling for positions in the main event? Out of it, the number 27 of Edwards, the number 64 X of Frost, the number 21 of Katrin, the number 39 of Amos, and apparently Hoosier, the number 11 of as well. Well, Will we'll survives. Dwayne Lee checked underneath the car. It's our understanding that he has a flat left front tire, but the fact that Dwayne Lee checked under the rear end of the machine is a clear sign that he thinks that there might be some problem in the car there. If you're going to have problems with the rear end of your car, it's better to find out in one of the qualifying races than in the three hour. Bringing them to the lead. The green flag is displayed. We go to lap number nine, and Ronnie Klontz has the lead. There's the battle now for second place with Mike St. John of the number 51 coming to that runner-up position. And now to third place, Curtis Murphy in 66X. And back to fourth place is Tom Collins in the number 34. We're at the runner-up spot on the restart. Fifth place will be the number 44 of Gary Bedell. Sixth place is the number eight of Rodney Sizemore. And watch out, Doug Blake spinning the number 33 out of the fourth turn. Now a three-car pileup that takes out one of the leaders, the number 66 of Curtis Murphy, and Scott Martin in his third crash of the night. Both out of it at the south end of the racetrack. Five Klontz leads on the charge, the number 51 of St. John. 
third place, 44, Bedell, challenging the fourth place, number eight of Rodney Sizemore. Up to fifth place, 31, Dossie. Sixth place is the number six of Charlie Reed. Last qualifying spot now to deal with number 27. Back to eighth place is the number 34 of Collins. Ninth place is the number 14 of Tunney. By my reckoning, 10th place is Garrigus, the 99. Watch out, the number five of Clutch. Almost gotten to the side of the number two of Jerry Moore coming through the intersection. Klotz has to watch it once again for more. Here's Mike St. John keeping a close watch on the number 34 of Collins. Now the battle for third place with number eight of Sizemore and the number 31 of Dossie trying to turn to the inside of Sizemore looking for position number three as they come northbound for the 12th time. And there's Steve Reiner getting back onto the racetrack at the number 64. Klotz has shown some trouble in traffic and that allows Mike St. John who hits the wall and turn number one of lap number 14 to close up. In third place, it's still the number eight of Rodney Sizemore. In the fourth place, number 31 of Dossie. Fifth place is Charlie Reed in the number six. Sixth place is the number 44 of Adele. Last qualifying stop, Bill, belongs to the number 27 of Deal. And in eighth place, you've got the number four of Bill Tenney Jr. Ahead of the ninth place, number 34 of Collins. And the tenth place, number 99 of Garrigus. Heavy traffic now starts to bring the leaders together. Klotz and St. John almost collide as they come into turn number one of lap number 16. St. John stays on the charge. Klotz struggles to stay in front of St. John as they sashay through a crowded intersection. Jeff Rich, we notice, is still running on the racetrack, but he is still falling back at the number 55. Mike St. John tries to come to the inside of Klontz for the lead and turns number one and two of lap number 17. They stay wheel to wheel going into turn number three. St. John a little loose through the third turn. Klontz stays one length ahead. About a quarter lap behind them, you have three drivers racing for third place. The number eight car of Rodney Sizemore, the number 31 of Dossie, and the number six of Charlie Reed at the intersection. They split five abreast as they almost get into the silver number 12 of Kevin Ford. The battle for the lead is at the north end of the racetrack, and again, Mike St. John goes extremely high and almost crashes, and has to watch out for Bedell's 44. He loses the position, does Bedell to the number 27 of Deal. As we watch Collins go a lap down in the number 34, Quant still leads in five. Second place is the 51 of St. John. Third place is the eight of Sizemore. Fourth place, 31 Dossie. Fifth place is the number six of Charlie Reed. Sixth place is the number 27 of Deal. Seventh place is the number 44 of Adele. In eighth place is the number four of Bill Tunney Jr. And by my reckoning, those are the last drivers left on the lead lap. For a moment, we watch Jeff Rich in the number 55. He'll try to crawl through the intersection. He hasn't moved very much the last couple of minutes. The race for the lead has not slacked one bit. Klontz has held it in the number five. Mike St. John of the number 51 has stayed on a constant attack. Rice for third place, going into turn number three. The number eight of Sizemore, the number 31 of Dossie, who turns number three and four. Look through a crowded crossover, and there's the number five of Klontz having to sashay two ways to keep from getting into that battle for third place. That allows the number 51 of Mike St. John to go for the lead. He looks for it out of turn number three and four with heavy traffic ahead. And it's Klontz that gets the line first because St. John had to slow for Rich. Rich is sandwiched by St. John and Klontz out of turn number two. They had northbound through an empty intersection section and Bill Tenney Jr. drops out of the race. He by my reckoning was in eighth place. Now Jack Dossie Jr. hits the number 70 car of Rich. The seven car of Tony Reed and that hurts Dossie's machine but he manages to keep on going as the number 51 of Mike St. John has taken over the lead. Second place down to the number five of Ronnie Klontz. In third place is the number six of Charlie Reed. Fourth place is the number eight of Rodney Sizemore. Fifth place is now the number 31 of Jack Dossie Jr. In sixth place, you've got the number 27 of Eddie Deal is the number five of Klontz. Almost hits the number 55 of Rich and the last driver on the lead lap. Last driver with a qualifying spot at this juncture as he worked to the halfway mark is the number 44, Bedell. And Bedell almost ran head on. He did hit the number 82 of Charles Graham. And that drops Bedell out of the last qualifying spot to the main event. Bedell comes and stalls on the racetrack almost as if lobbying for a red flag. Bedell, I think, is still capable of running that car. But Bedell is gesturing inside the race car as if he is trying to get a red flag out of the starter. For the moment, we'll run under a standing yellow. 
And also for the moment, we see the number 51 of Mike St. John coming down to finish the 26th lap, but that lap will not count because of the display of the red flag. The red flag comes out after the number 44 of Gary Bedell ran into the tail end of the number 82 of Charles Graham. Graham kept on going, but it broke Bedell's front suspension on the right side and drops Bedell out of the last qualifying spot to the main event. getting ready to bring the number 83 car back onto the racetrack. This restart will begin lap number 27 of 50. Mike St. John gets the solid hole shot as we go into the first turn. Quads follows just a couple of lanes back. We're developing a three-car battle for third place between the number six of Charlie Reed, but Reed storms away for the number eight of Sizemore, and Reed may be trying to catch up to the leaders, St. John of the number 51. As far as I can tell, this is the first time this year that St. John has driven that number 51 car. And then you've got the number five of Klotz, but look at the number six of Charlie Reed. He has pulled away from the eight of Sizemore and the number 31 of Dossie. Also notice that Collins in number 34 is now in front of the number 99 of Garrigas. That may have been a pass for the last transfer spot to the main event, but again, that's something that we'll have to double check with the scores. Plots in five, not able to stay up with the leader, number 51 of St. John. But Reed in number six is starting to close up on Klotz. And if Klotz runs into some traffic and you see there's a pack of about a dozen cars out there, Dossie in trouble. Jack Dossie Jr. of the number 31 almost crashed the car. Oh, watch out for Charlie Reed at the intersection. They almost destroyed each other. As we see Ernie Herrera dropping out of the race, the number 50, and St. John flying through the intersection. Dossie, fast qualifier, runs into problems with this machine. It looks as if he may have some damage to the right front corner of that car. Looks as if the, the car is leaned over, and Dossie is really more struggling than anything else. It could fall a lap down here shortly. It may be more that Dossie is trying to save the car for tomorrow night rather than race here. Dossie is now back to sixth place by my reckoning. We saw some sparks underneath Mike St. John's number 51 as he swarms past Dossie and puts him a lap down. St. John now in some heavy traffic as he puts the number 27 of any deal one lap down. That would leave only five drivers on, four drivers on the lead lap by my reckoning. St. John of the number 51, the number five of Quans, the number six of Charlie Reed, and the number eight of Rodney Sizemore. Again, by my reckoning, if the watch out as the Rodney Sizemore car went through, there's the number 99 of Garrigas going around the number 34 of Collins, I believe. That was a pass for position. Through it all, we see that Mike St. John has held on to that consistent advantage. Klontz in second at the number five. Third place of Charlie Reed, still trying to catch up to Klontz. Klontz is in some heavy traffic. We notice the number 70 of Tony Hall has gotten restarted. Oh, Reed at the number eight of Rodney Sizemore almost ended their racing careers there at the crossover. And Mike St. John has to watch out for the 6 2 4 Swore Ryder and then with the 27 of Roger Edwards slowed down. He almost got hit by the number 27 of Deal, who's trying to stay out of the way of the number five of Klotz. It's that sort of race. 15 laps to go. And the number 51 of St. John holds on to a steady advantage. Over the last couple of laps, the number five of Klotz has pulled away from Charlie Reed, who almost stops the middle of the racetrack to keep from hitting Frost. But Reed stays way clear of the fourth place number eight of Rodney Sizemore. Rodney I saw Sizemore again as another close encounter with Charlie Reed at the intersection. And Mike St. John almost crashed in the number 77 of Knauss. St. John maintains that lead of about one turn. Still trying to find his way through the crossover with 12 laps. Watch out! The number 55 of Roddy Klontz has some big sparking from underneath that car. As they watch him come out of the fourth turn, something is dragging underneath Klontz's machine, and it's dragging underneath the right rear, left rear. The suspension has broken, and Klontz loses second place just that fast. Klontz may be able to get into the starting field on his qualifying times, but he's got to run a lot tomorrow. That drops us down to three drivers on the lead lap. The leader, Mike St. John, in 51. The second place, number six of Charlie Reed. And in third place, the wheelman, the number eight of Rodney Sizemore. Ten laps to go now. Can Mike St. John survive? 
We need the cars for the USAC midget feature to the pit gate. We need the cars for the USAC midget feature. We need the cars for the USAC midget feature to the pit gate. Mike St. John now battling for survival at the same track where he won the three-hour figure-eight endurance race last year. Still holding on to the two-turn advantage over Charlie Reed. Coming down to finish the 42nd of 50 laps in this race. Works out of the fourth turn. Watches out for cars all over the crossover. Now almost clips the number 27 of Randy Edwards. Through all of this, Charlie Reed has managed to close in a length or so. We see that Jack Dawsey Jr. has suffered even more damage than the left front of that car. But Charlie Reed still moves out there smoothly. The driver that won the one-hour figure-eight endurance race last week at the Indianapolis Speed Dome. Two consecutive figure-eight feature victories for Charlie Reed, but he is still in pursuit of the number 51 of Mike St. John. St. John will have six laps to go when he comes out of three and four and threatens to lap the number eight of Rodney Sizemore as we go into the first turn of St. John's 45th lap and the 44th lap for Sizemore as we're almost down to having only two drivers on the lead lap. And there's Mike St. John turning to the inside of Rodney Sizemore. He tried to get Sizemore engaged with the number 12 car of Robbie Five, but both drivers go underneath him. Mike St. John holds on to the advantage in a fresh car for St. John, one just put together by his brother Tommy. And he is running this one at absolute full speed. The car flies around turns number three and four. But notice that the number six of Charlie Reed is closing in with four laps left to go. With Mike St. John caught in heavy traffic, trying to put Rodney Sizemore one lap down. And Rodney is not going easily. Here's Charlie Reed catching up. Now Mike St. John makes a fast move through traffic and injects four or five slower cars between himself and Charlie Reed. And that may have been the winning move right there. Mike St. John will have two laps to go this time by. Charlie Reed had kept the lead down from two turns to one turn. Now that Mike St. John has lapped the number eight car of Rodney Sizemore with two laps left to go. Mike St. John dominating this race and looking for a solid position in the starting field. And Mike St. John, who was had to be disappointed this season at the Indianapolis Speed Jump because he was not able to come home the Pro Stock Champion, watches as we come out of three and four and he gets the white flag. Coming up next, the United States Auto Club Midgets for their last race of the year. But for Mike St. John, it's still an attempt to go for victory. Headed through the north end of the racetrack, through turns number three and four. Coming to the crossover watching for a few cars, but winning the figure eight race with the third position going to the number eight of Rodney Sizemore lap down and second place last driver on the lead lap, the number six of Charlie Reed. So Mike St. John immediately stages himself as one of the four. Oh, now Charles Graham on the checkered flag has the left rear completely come off. The wheel finishes about 10 lanes behind Charles Graham. So we'll need a record for Ed Brown's number 83 and Charles Graham's number 82. And Mike St. John declares himself as the true favorite to win the three-hour figure-eight endurance race at the Indianapolis Speedrome. Congratulations, Mike. Oh, thank you very much. I'd just like to thank all the people that helped me and uh, the crew chief, Tommy St. John, and um, the car, car owner, Darren Gilbert. They gave me a fine race car. and. Uh, this is the very first time this car's ever been on eight, and by no means it's right. We still got a couple more bugs, but I'm tickled to death where we are right now with the car. Well, you made a few inside moves tonight, especially when you got around a couple of people in some lap cars that looked awfully quick and awfully fast. It looks like you're pretty close to where you want to be. Yeah, I'm real close. All I got to do is get a good night's sleep and uh, Hope the man downstairs looked down on me, but uh, it's a long race, and uh, there's a lot of other top drivers out here who's got good cars and running up front. Uh, i got to keep my nose clean. 
All right, Nate, you did tonight. Mike St. John comes home a winner as he begins his quest for a third straight World Figure 8 Championship here at the Indianapolis Speedrome. Okay, let me get that shot going on.